God, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And in other words, when you get around people who do not know who they are in Christ, who do not know who God is, who does not know that God is capable of doing the impossible, then they will try to convince you that you don't need to pray, that you don't need to go to church, that that all your prayers are in vain. I don't see God working on your behalf. I don't see your business getting no bigger. So they will begin to um, try to disencourage you because they are disencouraged because they are following somebody that they shouldn't be following. So what they did, they said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. The people remained noncommittal at that point. And in other words, they were neither or or either. They was on neither side. They couldn't commit to either side. Elijah then challenged the prophets of Baal to prepare a bull as an offering for their God. Elijah would do the same with this catch. They could light no fire on the altar. The God who answered with the fire from the sky would be considered the true God. And if you continue reading on down, that is in verses 22 and 25. The people agreed that this was a good plan, and the prophets of Baal went first. The pageant prophets cried out and danced around their altar from morning till noon with no answer from Baal. Elijah began to mock them, saying, shout louder. (laughs) Surely he is God. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy traveling. Maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened, First Kings 18 and 27. So the prophets of Baal shouted louder and began to slash themselves with swords and spears as was their custom until blood flowed. In other words, they got disappointed because they couldn't see their God doing anything to the bull. They couldn't see their God even. They couldn't hear. He didn't talk back to them. In another word, their God didn't talk back to them. So they got, they got disappointed, and they started cutting on themselves. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice, which you'll find in First Kings 18, 28, 29. Despite hours of effort, nothing happens. The historians come and hint at the emptiness of Baal worship. There was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Verse 29, Elijah then called to him as he repaired the altar of the Lord. He used 12 stones and dug a trench around the altar. He then placed wood on the altar and laid the cut pieces of the bull on it. Elijah then had the people douse the altar with 12 large jars of water. The water soaked the sacrifice, and the wood filled the trench. Filled the trench, 1 Kings 18, 30-35. Once the sacrifice was ready, Elijah prayed. He began to pray, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known today you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. First Kings 18, 36, 37. Then God did what Baal could never do. The fire of the Lord fell from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and also licked up the water in the trench. The people of Israel bowed down and declared the Lord was God. So I'm praying tonight that the fire from heaven will fall down upon your altar, will fall down upon your business, oh God, that it will fall down upon your business and you will be able to do more than you've ever done before. I'm praying that that promotion will be more than it's ever been before and that not only that, when your friends and family begin to see the works of the Lord in your life, that they will begin to call on God as well, amen. Elijah then commanded the people to put the prophets of Baal to death. In keeping with God's command in Exodus 22:20, 20, 
Following this event, the Lord finally ended the drought and sent rain upon the land, 1 Kings 18.45. Now listen now, the miraculous event of fire from heaven was an answer to the prayer of Elijah. That's why I'm trying to get you back to your prayer life when it comes down to your business. Prayer is not just for your own personal relationship or only when you need some, but prayer is also whenever you're trying to tell people who God is and who your connection is. This miraculous event of fire from heaven was an answer to the prayer of Elijah. God was seeking to turn the hearts of his people back to himself. Imagine, just imagine if people see your dollar doing many of things, and I'm not talking about millions of dollars or billions of dollars, but what if your $50 seed was able to help 100 people and people would begin to see that who do, did not know God. I'm, I'm talking about people who are not saved or people who just need to be reminded that God is still alive. Imagine if they saw your little self working despite what you didn't have, but you continued to work anyway. Just imagine what that could cause them to do. It could cause their hearts to turn back to God. Because sometimes we stray away, especially in business. When we use that phrase, business is just business. You know, for some reason, I've never cared anything about that phrase because I don't think, I don't think like that. I don't think business is just business. I believe that if God is not in it, then don't expect to win it. You may look good for a little while, but eventually, Anything that does not have God's hand on it would lay there and dry up and will not be of any good. When God's hands is not on it, don't expect to reap any good out of it. Sure, you may have millions of dollars and thousands of dollars from this business to that business, but the thing is, what is your mind like? When we look and we see all these actors and these million-dollar people with all this money in the world, but their heart is far from God. Their heart is far from God, and they can't find answers and solutions. When we look back over and we see a lot of pastors now committing suicide, going through mental warfare and a tormenting mind because they are not trusting God in the season that God has given them. And when we read Exodus, it teaches, no, Ecclesiastes teaches us about the different seasons of life that we will go through. In your business, listen, in your business, you're not going to always go through good things. You're not going to always have the business that you want and that you see everybody else having. You see, that was 450 prophets who were believing in an idolized God who did not answer them back when they called, who did not show up. So it disappointed them to the point where they began to cut themselves and the blood gushed out. And that's how it is. When we pay attention to what everybody else is doing in a season and we don't pay attention to what God is telling us to do and we don't connect our prayer life, we're not asking God for direction, we're just out here floating around in our own mind. We're out here waiting for the trendsetters. In 2019, hallelujah, in 2019, you will no longer copy the trendsetters. God will give you your own vision. He will give you your own thing to do. He will give you increased faith in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You see, because Elijah was a great man of God. He was a prophet, and he prayed for that drought. And not only did he pray for the drought, but he also prayed for the end, and God answered both times. He didn't answer immediately, but he did answer both times. Pray for God's fire to consume you in your business. Amen. Hallelujah. Be careful that you're not getting caught up into imitation, what you're seeing everybody else is doing. Yeah, it's important to set trends, but you want to set godly trends. You want to set steps that will lead people back to God. Amen? So you got to be careful in this season 
who you're copying. You can write that down. I will not be a copycat. <laughs> In 2019, I will not be a copycat. Amen. You must learn how to pray in agreement with the Holy Spirit. Amen. The same time God has called you to a unique gift, he's called you to be unique. So that's why when I say sometimes we are bad to follow those that look good, but they have no godly intention. And then you wonder why when you show up, when they're around that they don't speak to you or they act like they don't know you or they start picking on you and mocking you, it's because it's not a godly thing. You are just going off of what you see. I was um, doing business with somebody, and I realized that everything that they did was based off of copying what someone else was doing. So I wondered, where is the God in this? And I asked God, and I prayed on it. I was like, Lord, is this where I need to be? Should I be in this? It don't feel right. And I got my answer. The answer was no, don't be in that. Because I haven't called you to follow people. I've called you to follow the steps of Jesus. And see, we get jealous, and and we get um, to a point where we feel, um, what's the word about it? We feel intimidated. We feel like we can't do it without people. We feel like if we don't do what they're doing, we're not going to be accepted. Newsflash, you're not supposed to be accepted by everybody. Amen. Who do you believe? Do you believe the God's of Baal, Baal or the God of Elijah? Because the Lord of Elijah, mm, I love it. The Lord of Elijah came through. He came through. You cannot get to another level in this season serving a false god or analyzing images of Baal. You can't get through by watching what everyone else is doing and just trying to copy and mimic what they're doing in this season. God is calling for you to put your hands to the plow and work. He's calling for your mind to be steadfast on him. He's calling for your prayer life to get intense. Have an intense prayer life. Don't be afraid to go in without season. Amen. You are praying to a God who answers back. He answers back. It's just as sure as we are woman and man and we have a prayer that needs an answer. God will answer his children back. Don't worry about those who mock you in this season because your business isn't as big as theirs or you may not be on a Fortune 500 cover. Don't worry about that. People are going to do that. We can expect that. That's part of the enemy's the enemy's tactic to stop you from going forth with what you have. Anytime you have a product, and, of course, you're going to have your rivalry out there. You're going to have your competitors out there. But you don't need to worry about them. You need to stay steadfast on what God has given you. You need to continue to research. Write that down. That's the next thing you want to do. Well, the first thing you need to do is to become an, to become an overtaker is you need to get your prayer life together. If Elijah hadn't had a prayer life, nothing would have came to pass. But the Bible says that Elijah prayed again and again. Sometimes you're going to have to go back in and pray again and again and again and again until something happens. The next thing is research. you got to learn how to research. In other words, when I say research, find out more information on your business. What is it that your business needs? How, what things can you implement into your business that will make it stand out, what will make it unique? So you need to research the things of your business, of your business. Instead of trying to do what you see someone else doing, do what God has given you to do. Amen. So research. Learn how to put the time in. See, Elijah used this time wisely. Sometimes you got to call a challenge to opinions 
people's opinions. You got to be careful of those non-commensal people. You know, the Bible was speaking of that as I was reading, you know, 